Hey, everybody. It is Doug Welker here. I am with Josh Rhodes. Josh, want to say what's up? Hey, what's going on, everybody? Just sitting here in the hobby room. Yeah, I've got my background here. I'm going to actually be in my hobby room next time. Um, sorry about that. So I'm using this Bigfoot shot background to, to get me through here. Um, hey, it's a good background, though. you got two of the greatest trucks in the world right behind you. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I wish I was sitting here for the show. It's just too bad they're not black and green, but eh. yeah, yeah. Hey now, hey now, this is a Bigfoot show. Um, hey, so thank you guys last week for the questions and uh, for the comments and the views and everything. It's fun. This is uh, episode two of Pulling Trigger with uh, Josh and Doug. And today we're going to talk about um, how to become a better monster truck racer. And there's a bunch of info out there when it comes to RC racing and, and how you can be a better RC racer. And one of my favorite subjects to talk about is RC monster truck racing and specifically and the individual things that are really important to this, this genre. And, um, I, you know, I'm experienced in it. I've got about what, six or five years now of monthly racing and I've raced in some big races. And then Josh, you know, you've got a lot of experience. You've won a lot of races. Mm -hmm. Um, yep. I've got about 12 years in now. Um, I've been all over the place as far as the RC monster truck world goes. Ohio, I tried to go to Connecticut last year to race, but that unfortunately got canceled. Uh, I I just love it. It's uh, one of the few forms in the in the RC hobby period where everybody travels to try to go and see each other because they just love hanging out with everybody. Yeah, it's it's a fun community, and like even really, I know that there's some animosity, but you know, between clubs and some stuff like that. But really, it's more a fun type of thing. Everybody is kind of in it together and it's a nomadic existence we have as monster truck racers mm -hmm. traveling around. A lot of times the tracks aren't permanent, you know, here, luckily at trigger King, we have a permanent one. Thanks to John and JB scale graphics, but um, it's, it's tough. And uh, just cause you're racing on a bunch of different surfaces. A lot of times the track is a pop-up track. You could be on carpet, you could be on anything. And um, so let's not talk only that, but you got to go and abide by different series rule packages as well, because yeah. our rule package is different than Michigan and Michigan's is different than uh, New York. California is different than New York. Hawaii is different than California. You got to read up on all that if you're going to go race in some of these series. Yep. I mean, most are fairly simple. It's kind of like a real racing series to where there are certain general classes that are you know similar, like um, NHRA, I think of like a pro stock car. There's some differences in different organizations slightly, but a pro stock for the most part, I think is a pro stock um, or pro mod is a better example of that. But um, let's start off here. Uh, we have some questions too. You guys send in some great questions and be sure to leave some below here too. Um, if you've got a topic for another show, but we had some great questions pertaining to racing and some other subjects around it. And I want to start off here and talk about something that I don't see talked about as much. And that it's the most fun part to talk about with monster truck racing. And it's the mental aspect of it. We spend a lot of time talking about truck setup and we're going to talk some setup stuff here later. Um, but you don't see a lot of the mental aspect that is, is really talked about. And a lot of times, at least with me, um, you know, Josh said he's got 12 years of, of uh, monster truck racing. I should say I've got 20 some years of RC racing. I only started actually doing monster truck racing the last six with Trigger King. But um, some of this applies to general RC racing, but some of it is very monster truck specific. And I'm going to let Josh chime in here, but Josh is a good example. I'm going to use him as, as an example. Um, when you're lining up against an opponent, monster truck racing is very much like drag racing and it's one on one. So you're really racing your opponent, right? And I know that we say race your own race, and that is true, but let's be honest here. You know who's in the other lane typically. If you have a pro over there, you're going to race him different than maybe the newbie who just showed up with a truck that you know isn't even set up right. So I'll get into my spiel here, but like Josh, I'm curious what you do, because I know when I'm racing you, you and I have raced so many times, I approach you differently than I would somebody else. And I'll talk about that in a minute. There'll just be a fun example. But what do you think about it, Josh, for the, like the mental aspect of it? The mental aspect of it for me, when I first started out, I didn't know anybody. So racing somebody you don't know is quite a bit different than racing somebody you do know. Like everybody in Trigger King, y'all don't get in my head anymore. Sorry about that. My phone went off. Uh, Y'all don't really get in my head anymore as far as racing each other. Uh, every now and then, somebody will say something and it'll get to me. Like, uh, I'll use it like last year for an example. There was a retro bracket that I was a part of. It was the debut of the Bigfoot 4 regulator that I had. 
it went out and it won the first bracket. And then the second bracket, it got hooked up a little bit on a, a spike behind a jump. And I'm not going to mention names, but somebody said something and it, it got me riled up. And when it happened, I approached it a lot differently with the digger truck and ended up going out and winning with the digger truck in the second bracket. So every now and then the, the trash talk between people will really get you riled up. Um, as far as racing somebody you don't know, like uh, I'll just use last weekend for an example. I raced at the Childress RC racing with uh, Jason, Jason Childress, Lonnie Childress, Trigger King veterans, but they had J concepts down there. And we had Jason Rona, Tad Goad, two guys you don't race against very often, but they're two guys that are extremely good mm -hmm. and they are extremely hard to beat. So even me, I've got all these years of experience when you're lining up against Jason Rona, who's somebody that's gone all over the world in RC racing, your heart kind of flutters a little bit because you're like, God, I want to beat this guy. I want to put that, that on my, my bucket list, you know, knock that one off. And uh, happy to say I did, by the way, just so when Jason watches this back, hey, I had you. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it, it can be it can be tough, but it can also it can also be uh, uplifting. We'll put it that way. It's thrilling, yeah, for sure. I mean, that's I that's what I love with the short races like that in general. I mean, a long track is like a thirty second race, and most of the time we're talking probably ten or fifteen seconds, and we spend all this money and all this time on these trucks for a 15 second run. Yeah, and it can and be a, you know, it, a lot of people, a lot of people say things about that, but then immediately I just point to the real thing. Well, it, well yeah, exactly. And exactly. there's a lot more, a lot more money spent. The dollars, the dollar per time on track is more skewed with the mm -hmm. full, the full size. Um, people say that, but you know, I, I would imagine most of the people watching this are people that are either monster truck races or they're at least interested and um, I do appreciate this is kind of a niche thing because a lot of people haven't gotten to race, but it's hopefully you kind of take some advice if you do come to your first monster truck race. Um, being so short, it is thrilling and it's amazing how you can make a million practice runs. It might be a simple track. As soon as you're lined up there against somebody else and there's a light that's about to go green, you'll start doing crazy things. And if you don't know how to control yourself, you'll shoot off to the side or just do other stuff. And it's just an exercise in frustration. So what I do, my routine as I become more experienced is you're not supposed to race. I, I should say, I guess, first off, if you're not experienced, you probably should just race your own race as best you can. And at least just try and go straight around the track. So this is more for the advanced guy, I guess. Um, I, I use it like it's poker playing and I'll use you for an example, Josh, if I'm going to race you, um, I'm going to, a lot of times I'll make up my mind beforehand and say, I'm going to go all out this run. I'm going to like pin it to the floor. And if I screw up, I'm fine with it because I have to race fast this round. And a lot of times with you, that's what I will do um, is just go up there and say, you know what? I'm not going to worry about screwing up a start. I'm going to hit this thing as hard as I can. And I know I have to race it as fast as I can. And I'm fine if I screw up. I mentally tell myself I'm fine if I screw up, but I have to race this hard. There are other guys that I race who, if I know I've got a pretty considerable advantage, I will dial it down a little bit because I don't want to just, you know, shoot off a ramp sideways and miss something um, kind of, I don't want a penalty and take myself out of it. So when you're talking like a Jason Rona, I've raced him multiple times. And yes, that's the same thing I tell myself, you know what, you're going to race this, me talking to myself, you're going to race this as hard as you absolutely can. And if you roll the truck, if you do something stupid, you're going to be fine with it. You, and I just accept it going up there. And then I run it as hard as I can. I, that's, that's kind of what I do. I kind of figure out how much percentage wise am I going to try and give a run? Um, doesn't work for everybody. And I know the difficulty, if you watch the other lane, sometimes the other guy will roll and then you'll take your foot off the gas and roll yourself or do something stupid and have to rerun. And um, so it's not, you don't always want to watch the other guy, but that's my strategy, Josh, you know, is to, I know how much I have to give. Um, and, and make that it, the decision with myself. That's what I do before a race. Yeah, I hear you. Uh, as far as uh, when I'm racing somebody like, uh, like you had mentioned, sometimes, and I'm very guilty of this, I take some people for granted sometimes, and I'll end up, I can think of a race a few years ago. Um, I'm not going to say who I was racing against because I don't want him getting in my head. <laughs> but uh, 
I remember I went out there. I was like, oh, I'm going to take a little bit easy this pass. And when I did, I was actually surprised that I lost the race, just flat out lost it. <laughs> I even had to go back and like, can I look at that replay? Because I was fairly certain I won, but no, yeah, I got nipped right at the line because I took it just a little bit too easy. You, you get to, it's a fine line between, okay, I'm going to race this guy as hard as I can, or okay, I'm going to kind of back off a little bit because I know I've got this race won. You've got to you got to find a happy medium ground in there when you're pulling up to the line, I think, at least mm -hmm. for me. Yeah, and um, when you were talking about like the heart thumping, what I try and do also um, is take, I take at least one deep breath whenever I get up there and get my truck ready. Yeah, I, I do as my, well. I do. I ready well. myself in the stance with the controller. I always do the same thing. I wiggle my front wheels just to make sure the radio is working correctly. And make then, sure the truck is on. <laughs> well, that too. Yes. Uh, and I stand there and then I take one or two deep breaths to slow myself down. And like, that's when I feel like the focus hit and my best race days are always whenever I have that focus on. And one thing that I love, and I, a lot of racers get this there, admittedly, if you guys watch this channel, very few times that I actually, you know, will win the thing, but there are times I get in a groove and I'll tell myself mentally before the race that you've already won this race. You're going to kill this guy. And if I go up there with a killer instinct mentality, normally I do win. It's when the nerves creep in and you think, oh, you know, I, I'm not going to get this one or I don't think I can. You usually screw up. So for me, I try and go up with a killer instinct and it's fun in talking to real drag racers, full size ones that I've known or um, monster truck drivers too. There's a lot of guys that have that mental energy that they go up there and they know they've psychologically got the advantage. And that's fun with RC racing too. Even you, Josh, I'll say this, like there are times I know when you race angry, when you kind of having a bad day and, and I know your trucks are real fast. And that's when I think um, I've actually backed off and I've thought I'm going to run a smooth race. Cause I know Josh is, he's pissed right now and he's going to run his trucks ludicrously that's, hard. That's happened a couple of times. <laughs> and it's not just you. I'm just using you as an example because you're here, but um, your trucks are so fast. And that's why I know, Brandon, if you're watching this, Brandon, you're another guy. I know that if you're if you're angry, if you're racing angry, I've, I've got a mental edge. And that's what's part of – it's a psychological game. That's one of the things I like it so much. You get that with other RC racing, of course, too. But I just like the instant 15 minutes of complete intenseness of RC monster truck racing. And then, you know, go to the next round, and it ramps up, and it ramps up, and it ramps up till you get the finals. But um, my advice, though, is really just – be cognizant of that. Get in your own routine as you're going to drive. Um, go slow at first, and then once you can, start just figuring out what do you think you're going to give in the truck and go up there, strategize, and take a deep breath. That's what I would say. Do you have any other tips here, Josh, before we get into actual questions with some nuts and bolts? Well, as far as um, somebody that's just starting out, one thing I have, and you, you heard it, you said it earlier, you race your own race. If you win, you win, you lose, you lose. You go back to the pits and you, you take your you take your loss or you take your win with a grain of salt and you move on to the next round. That's what you need to do when you're first starting out. When you get a little bit more advanced, I still say do the same thing because you know you're, you're more of an advanced racer now. You can hit those jumps a little harder. If you lose, guess what? You probably lost by a couple inches, if that. Mm -hmm. Yep. Don't let it get in your head. Don't let it get you mad or anything like that. And that's one thing I can say about our club. You don't see guys getting mad and tossing trucks over tables like I have seen at other events. Yeah. Or other RC events. I mean, I've been, um, I've seen fist fights at RC dirt oval sprint car races. <laughs> I mean, I guess that's the one advantage though. Um, an RC monster truck race, you are on your own track. You're not, you don't have lap traffic and other stuff like that. So it's, exactly. You're in, you're in your own way, basically on a monster truck track. And, and that tells you if you're going to be angry, you better be angry at yourself because it's not the other guy. It very it's rarely 90% of the times. If I lose a race, I'm mad at myself more than I'm mad at my competitor. And I'm still going to tell my competitor it was a good race. I'm still going to walk over and either shake his hand or fist bump the guy. Yes. Yep. You should always I think do that's that. something that carries over from the one, one racing as well because monster truck racing has always been a sport related to family. Everybody kind of sees each other as family in most events that I've been to. They have. And you also want to, you don't want to be a jerk in the pits because you're going to need parts. <laughs> exactly. Need parts and exactly. somebody's going to want to give it to you like real monster trucks, right? Everybody's stealing parts from each other. Um, getting into some of the nuts and bolts thing. Here's something that's pretty important. John actually JB skill graphics wanted to ask this. He asked about a nut and bolt check. What do you guys do for that? And, that is actually 
Well, there's a couple nut and bolt checks. One, you want to make sure your transmission, all that stuff is, you know, tightened down. It's very easy to have screw ups like that. But for me, make sure your wheel nuts are tightened before you race. I, I have seen so many guys, you know, thousand dollar trucks, myself included. You get all ready, you get up there, you hit the throttle and the wheel, the wheel pops off because it got loose. Yeah. I had a bracket a couple of years ago when we were still racing at your dad's shop. I got to the final and, um, I want to say it was a crossover track that we ran on the blacktop and no offense to the competitor that I was racing. I knew I had the race locked as soon as I pulled to the line. It was one of those guys that come through the bracket and just got fairly lucky because it was, it was a different style track. It was on asphalt. Yeah. As soon as I hit the throttle, right rear tire flies right off the truck <laughs> and I'm fuming mad driving the rest not even trying to drive the rest of the race at that point i'm like gosh dang i just threw this away and honestly when i look back at that i lost that championship by one point that so Mod racing championship lost it by one point if i go all the way back to that first bracket had i won it i probably would have won it by a point point. and i actually remember that series and the points thing i think you and i and Bob or somebody all tied at the top or it was all tied. We up were there. me and you tied for second. Bob legit won it by one point. It was, um, it just shows you just how, you know, crazy that is. Even if you're bashing, you should always check your wheel nuts because monster trucks in particular have a real nasty habit of even sometimes the serrated nuts. I mean, normally if you want to use serrated nuts, those normally do work the best, but every once in a while still, those big tires have a way of backing out and you might not know they're loose until the absolute worst time. And that's how you normally strip out hexes is having a I loose nut. last year. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you're about a hex cause your tires loose. Yeah. Yep. That's normally it. So John, thank you for that question. That's a good thing for all you new racers out there. Check your nuts. <laughs> exactly. Make sure before you go up there. Um, let's see here. Tim needs a new hobby. He asks, he's from YouTube. He asks, how can I get better at consistently hitting ramps square? Josh, I'll let you try and take this one. What I did back in the day after my very first race, I went to my local Walmart and I found little orange cones that were about this big. And I came home and I made jumps out of whatever I had laying around, a piece of plywood or whatever. And I stuck those cones on either end of the ramp. And we've done this in Trigger King as well, where we stick a cone at the end of the ramp. And over and over again, I'd go outside, I'd do a big circle, I'd come back around, and I'd go right through those cones over and over and over again. So I know what I'm looking for. And I, at the time, I was racing the Illinois Monster Truck Series, which is no longer racing at this time. But they had big white uh, PVC pipe that they had cut down and put a uh, blue thing around the top of. Uh -huh. But when you use those cones, it was kind of the same thing. So I knew what I was looking for when I go to the next race and little by little, I got better. And by the next season, I was winning brackets. Mm -hmm. One thing that I did uh, was that as well as you take some of those cones and you stick them in a straight line down and you just kind of slalom right through them and then come back. You get used to the steering of the truck. You get used to the way that it feels. I agree actually with the, I, I didn't have cones, but I used um, tires that I set up and I slalom. That's a good way to check your steering throw and also get the feel for the trucks. I agree. That's a good way to practice. If you use obstacles or things, you know, you can hit on like the side of like what a ramp face would be. That does really help you, especially as you get your speed up. Cause in trigger King, if you guys watch it and really most RC monster truck racing, a lot of uh, races are lost from guys. who just don't hit the ramp square. It's just tough when these trucks get going. So um, that's a great question. Did uh, Josh from Facebook, um, I think Jeremy Mark, who races with us, uh, Taurus Racing, he had a question too. If you want to get that one, yeah, Jeremy popped in and he said, maybe address shock tuning and how it can help performance, the value of the drop, the lower CG moving the shocks higher on the SNT 10 style chassis. That was one of the areas that really helped him across his racing and improve uh, from year two and beyond. Mostly learning from watching and talking with fellow TK racers. He's correct as far as the droop goes. The happy place as far as the droop is when you're holding the truck up, the suspension is fully drooped out. And when you set the truck down, your four link bars go from drooped to completely level. That's More your parallel, happy place yep. as far as your chassis and your shock setup goes. Um, as far as tuning the shocks, I don't personally put any dampening in my shocks. I make sure that they, they work, but they don't push back out. So whenever you jump and land, it corrects itself and it, it helps keep that droop when you 
hit the throttle. Yeah, that's um, actually, if you look at the uh, well, truck here right behind me in the background, look at the actual one of the Bigfoot trucks. That is a, a parallel four link bar right there. Yes, it, it doesn't have tires, big tires on it, but you want your bars parallel or close to parallel. Um, that means your center of gravity is good. That's like what makes the Lozy LMT so great out of the box is it's got a great suspension and a great um, layout. And the SMT-10, you have to change your shock mounting positions. Otherwise, yeah, that's you have to it. change it to get the level four link with the SMT-10. Yeah, because it sits way Jeremy's too probably, as far as the SMT-10 goes, he's probably the shock guru on mm -hmm. the SMT-10. He really knows what he's talking about. So uh, if you ever have any shock questions, he's probably the guy to talk to over at Taurus RC Monster Truck Racing. Uh, as far as just the shock guru, period, Aaron James' beast truck is insane to watch, taking as high as jumps as that truck can handle. Yeah, um, a shout-out to Jeremy, too, because Jeremy was one of the guys, you know, he drives from Wisconsin to St. Louis to race with us on all those Taurus trucks. And Jeremy started out, you know, really not with no experience at all and was one of those guys that Josh and I kind of talk about was kind of cannon fodder at first, you know, for the other guys. But Jeremy always just raced his own race. And he learned to um, not pay attention to the other guy and really just rate, made sure he could go smoothly. And as he got smoother, he got faster. And Jeremy never looks like he's, I shouldn't say that, but he, he sometimes looks fast. He's like Michael Arndt, uh, another one of our guys that he races sometimes who's really good. Or even like Jason, Jason Rona from uh, J Concepts, professional racer. Most of the professional racers never look fast necessarily. They look smooth. And they're driving very fast, but because they look smooth, it's not the out of control. That goes, that goes back to the mentality thing that we were talking earlier. Those guys are so smooth out there. If you're watching them two and three rounds in, and then you know you've got them later in the bracket, that gets in your head. It does. And you normally want to race harder against the smoother guy, and already you're on tilt. Like a mm -hmm. team, you know, a game like turn whatever. You you're on tilt already, and so they they have more of an advantage because they're going to run smooth, and it's it's very intimidating to run against the guy who you know isn't going to make a mistake because that pushes you to make you want to potentially make, you know, um, more of a mistake yourself. And uh, that's, that's just kind of the fun of it. Um, but let me think here. We'll go to another question. Um, let's see. So Tom Schuster, he asks, what are your favorite aftermarket chassis for racing clods and shafties? And you know what? I think we should do with that one, Josh. Um, that's a pretty loaded question. I think we should make that one the topic of another one of our shows coming up here in and of itself. Yeah, I, I tend to agree with you because I've driven just about everything as far as a clodbuster buster chassis goes, with the exception of a couple chassis out there. You probably know a little bit more about the shafty side of it. I probably know a little bit more about the clod side of it. Yes, exactly. Exactly. Um, one of the things here too, let me go through another comment. I'll save a fun one for last here. Um, Black Ops asks, actually a couple people asked this, but Black, o Black Ops from YouTube asks, asks, I would like to know how to get into monster truck racing and is Trigger King a private club only? So how to get into RC monster truck racing if he's asking who to race with. If you get on the like the Facebook groups, um, what is it, uh, Tamaya Cloudbusters Appreciation Society or any of the SMT10 or LMT or solid axle shaft. There's a bunch of Facebook groups for RC monster trucks. Just tell what region you and ask most regions of the country. Now I won't say most, but a lot of them have clubs. They might not race all the time, but they race semi yearly. And I would, I would recommend that you can always ask us to, um, you know, on, on Facebook or email us and, that, and that's cool. We can help you out there. He asked also is trigger King a private club only. And we get this question a lot. Um, we had to be a little bit private um, to where it's not that we couldn't let the public race with us. We just didn't advertise when we were racing because this last year we had so many people starting to show up. It, we had to kind of get it under control. It went yeah. from a club race to a national race very quickly. Like every single race over a hundred entries. And it, it's, we're like, okay, we can't advertise when we're going to race because we just have too many people. And then you had the COVID thing on top of it too. And, you know, trying to keep spread out. And it was uh yeah, this year we are going to advertise the schedule publicly, though. That's the plan. So uh, I think we're going to start, what, March 28th, I think, is the first date for You're outdoor. Correct. And then we're going to race in April again. We'll post that, and we'll talk about it in another a show here, too. But we are going to advertise publicly. And you can always drop a, uh, an email, triggerkingrc at gmail or doug at bigsquidrc.com. 
and I'll happily tell you when we're going to race. It's not that we necessarily hit it. We just didn't advertise it just because we have too many people, but this year, hopefully we, we, we can handle the crowds a little bit better now. We've, you know, we should be, we should be good there. So sorry if you've ever felt left out, that's never been the intention. We were just trying to get it under control. Um, I think, you know, the last real question here, this has nothing to do with racing, but this is kind of fun. Um, I'd like to know which stage one monster truck your favorite is. Josh, I'll let you go first, but for somebody who doesn't know, a stage one monster truck is the oldest of old school monster trucks. A stage one monster truck is an actual like big truck, um, like Bigfoot one, your USA one, the original one, uh, King Kong. Stage two is like the Bigfoot four when the trucks got box frames and the heavy duty axles and were more racing heavy duty vehicles. And then your stage three is your tube frame. So stage one are the true old schoolers. Josh, what do you got? Well, that's uh, it's like Dennis Anderson said back in the day is the, back in those days, it was the biggest, tallest truck with the shiniest KC lights on it with the most KC lights on it that win the contest. And I was always a fan of Brett Engelman's trucks. Mm. I always loved the heartbeat truck. Michigan Ice Monster was one that stood out to me, like I talked about uh, on my podcast with you, as well as Nick Davis yeah. on the Retro Monster Truck Review. That was one that just, it popped. The Michigan Ice Monster was something that we didn't see back in those days. We had the really clean look of Bigfoot and USA One. We had Monster Vet, which was unique. It was a Corvette bodied truck, yeah, but it was still a plain maroon paint scheme. Michigan Ice Monster, to me anyway, and people say, oh, Snake Bite's the first 3D truck. I don't know. This thing had a giant monster coming off the side of it, as well as on the windshield. Imagine Brett trying to drive that thing, by the way, with the monster painted on the windshield. I did wonder back in the day that when it had, he had that like white, um, it was like white paint or that white window chalk paint that was the monster. It looked like you couldn't see anything out of that it, windshield. It reminds, it reminds me a lot, and I'll, I'll put it this way. If you've seen uh, Talladega Nights with Ricky Bobby when he's got the Fig Newton's decal yeah. on the front on the yeah. windshield, <laughs> that's probably what it was like driving that truck. Well, in fairness, I can't remember what he drove like, but he probably had his head out the window anyways. I don't... Yeah, he was one of those guys that kind of had his head sticking out the window. But as far as stage one trucks go, Heartbeat is definitely one of them. Ice Monster is definitely one of them. But the ultimate is Excalibur. I was wondering. I didn't know if you were going to go the Grandma route, although Grandma is really stage two, I suppose. No, I would, I would still call Grandma stage one. Uh, it was a very competitive truck in TNT, but it, it broke a lot. Yeah, I, I guess I'm, I'm thinking of, um, I'm not, sorry, I'm not thinking of Grandma. I'm thinking of Digger 3, right? Which was the late TNT truck? The late TNT truck was 2. 2, okay, I'm sorry. I'm getting all my Diggers confused. Listen, I'm a Bigfoot guy. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. You keep, your, you keep your blue stuff over in St. Louis. I'll stick with my black and green. <laughs> sorry for the uh, dog barking here. Sorry, my, that's um, my dog, now it's yours. My, uh. Sorry here. I've got a Husky right next to me. Um, so my favorite, this is tough actually to think about which There's is my a favorite. a lot of choices. Yeah, for stage one. I mean, because you think of which ones look the best, maybe, but which ones were your actual favorite. Um, I mean, I grew up in St. Louis, so of course there were the Bigfoot trucks, but and uh, I've gotten to drive Bigfoot one, which by the way, you know, when you talk about the guys who you, you would drive with their head out the window or the guys who would drive in front of the truck or, you know, in the windshield, I would definitely be a head out the window guy because in Bigfoot one, I couldn't see anything out of the front like that. And there's no way I could run a race course ever like that. So I would have been a head out the window. I think the best looking one, though, it would be hard for me to beat the Virginia Giant would deal with. Well, I guess the first one was a stage one, correct? Yeah, the first Virginia Giant was definitely stage one. It's one of the original trucks. Yeah, that's, yeah, that, I mean, it looked fantastic. I mean, that was one of the best, the best looking ones. Um, just all the chrome and everything. I mean, Deal Wilson and his pulling trucks were all, you know, they all look great with that Virginia paint scheme. Yeah, the Virginia paint scheme and the Virginia Giant paint scheme are very similar and they both look phenomenal. Deal was one, also one of the first guys that was going out and doing the pulling portion of the truck, the, the event, as well as the monster truck portion of the event. So he's going for a double payday right there. Smart guy. Yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it, there's so many fun that we could do a show just on our favorite old school trucks like that. But uh, that's the truck, I guess, that comes to mind for, you know, the, the one that I really like. But there were so many awesome looking trucks that you would see in the, like Godzilla back then looked 
amazing with the big 73s. Oh, yeah. There was so much chrome on that thing. It goes back to uh, an old call. I remember it's got more chrome than Sammy Davis Jr.'s driveway. Yeah, it sure does. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, again, a lot of those trucks were more show than they were go. I can't even remember anything Godzilla ever did. Um, but man, but you sure remember the way it looked. Oh, gosh, it looked amazing. Uh, just it, there were so many of those old trucks that looked great. And that's that's why they're fun to see guys replicate them in RC form, too. But um, yeah, I'll go the Virginia Giant. I think that iconic scheme with I never I don't think I've ever seen a speck of dirt on the body either. Like it never looked dirty. It never. Oh, yeah. Him uh, deal and Pablo Huffaker were two of the cleanest guys in monster truck racing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was um, it was just a nice looking truck. So, well, yeah, guys, um, thank you for, you know, who were writing in and everything. If you have a question below here, we'll wrap up in a second. But if you do have a question, leave it below whether it's just a question we can answer on air or if you think it's a good episode for another topic for next week. Uh, this is episode two. Josh and I are going to keep doing this weekly. Middle of the week is kind of the idea here. So um, anything else, Josh, you want to kind of add here um, as we wind this down for, you know, tips racing? Well, we're talking about uh, the tips of the racing and everything. And speaking of racing, my re podcast, Retro Monster Trick Review, is going to have Jason Rohn on it this coming week. We're going to be talking TNT Louisville 1990. You want to keep talking old school monster trucks? Ain't no better guy to talk to because he's watched that event probably 500 times. He's told me so himself. But uh, as far as the racing stuff goes, man, the best thing I can, best advice I can give somebody is just keep your head on straight. Yeah, that's good advice. And I guess my thing would say, hey, if you're scared to do it, you just have to do it. And you have to remember, you're probably going to suck at first. It doesn't matter how good of an RC racer you or driver you are. There's just, it's way different when you are practicing versus when you get up there the first time. And it's like that really with any form of racing, but especially RC monster truck racing, because it's so short. It's not like other RC racing where you can have a bad lap and then get in a rhythm later because you have a five minute or 10 minute race. No, that's it. And you, it's, it's easier to screw up and just don't be discouraged. You just need to do it and just get the reps. Really, that's all you need is just the reps. You'll eventually get faster. Your heart will slow down and you'll start to have more fun. And yeah, you won't one, thing I'll, one thing I'll toss in here was I just <laughs> thought of it off the top of my head. Um, listen to your fellow competitors and don't try anything different or radical just because you think it's going to work. Listen to your fellow competitors when you're first starting out. That's one of the biggest mistakes that I see is uh, I'll just use this for an example. And I, I've had this happen numerous times from people to say, Hey, what truck's the best to start out with? And I'll answer the question and they will go the complete opposite route just because this truck is cheaper than this truck. Mm -hmm. And then they come to the racetrack and what happens? They yeah. Leave. <laughs> I mean, they, they, they get their butt kicked, they leave and then you never hear from that person again. That does happen. The one and done guys who kind of have the monstrosities or you see like the, uh, I won't throw a brand. Up. Well, okay. Like a ground pounder or something like that. When you have it racing against other trucks, it, you're doing yourself such a disservice or like the Kyosho mad forces, those mm -hmm. kind of trucks. Like you, people think they can overcome that, but normally they can't, especially now, maybe you could back in the day when there wasn't as much purpose built stuff off the shelf, but now you have like the LMT, you have the SMT 10 and a lot of guys know how to mod them. Even the knowledge for Cloudbuster modification now is way more than it used to be even five years ago. So mm -hmm. yeah, make sure you have decent equipment. And if you don't have decent equipment, you, it's probably not realistic to expect great results. But um, you know, one of these times what we're going to do here, Josh, I think another good one would be how to maybe start your own club or how to start your, your racing because trigger King started with just four guys jacking around mm -hmm. and anyone can really do that. As long as you've got some buddies, you know, if you've got three buddies, you can go monster truck racing. You could do it with one other person, but at least then if you've got four, you've got a bracket of trucks, yeah, you know, you've got a bracket right there. Yeah. Um, so I would just leave you with that guys. Go do it. If you can. Um, thank you guys very much for watching Josh. I know Josh, uh, you want to plug yourself here one more time. Uh, retro monster truck review podcast coming up this week. Jason Rona is going to be the guest host TNT Louisville 1990. Can't wait to talk about it. You can find me on Instagram at Josh Dig Roads. You can find me on Facebook at Josh Roads RC Racing. And the Retro Monster Truck Review on Instagram is uh, at Retro MT Review and Retro Monster Truck Review on Facebook. All right. And hey, everybody. My name's Doug. Uh, you can read my column midweek, the Monster Truck Madness column on BigSquidRC.com. I normally do the Big Squid Live anymore that we do on Thursday nights around 8.30 Central Time. I've been on there a bunch with the Big Squid guys. And um, yeah, guys, you're going to check us out here next week um, with uh, more episodes of Pulling Trigger. 
And soon enough, we will be racing again. We're trying to get through the winter here. We're going to have a busy summer, busy spring, but we're trying to get through the doldrums here of winter as we you know, do this today. It's actually snowing out here in both of our yeah, houses. Pouring so. snow. Yeah, same here. Um, all right, guys. Hey, thank you very much for watching, and we will see you soon.